Today on Risk Beards and Gear, we correct my room with Direct Live Room Correction. Wanting the best possible listening experience in your given room is not really something that's new. I mean, you could argue that the you know first recording studios were built for that purpose. However, for those of us at home, there's really two applications that you would want to dial in your listening environment. One, and most obvious if you're watching this video, is a home studio situation. But the other situation is the home theater sector and the, the hi-fi audio guys. And those worlds are coming together with Dirac Live Room Correction. Now, before we go any further, this is a sponsored video as Dirac have asked me to show you guys this room correction. However, all thoughts and opinions are mine. Now, Dirac has been in the room correction game for quite a long time, and they have provided room correction solutions in the hi-fi world and the home theater world, and they have also created Dirac Live Room Correction for people like me. So first, why would you want room correction? Well, no room is perfect. Mine's pretty far from perfect. Mine is actually like a weird L shape, but the materials and the way and the methods that uh, a room was constructed will absolutely directly affect the way your room sounds when you're listening to music. This is the whole purpose of a recording studio. It's purpose built to listen and record music, but not all of us can live in a recording studio. So we make do with what we have and to fill that gap to get to sonic perfection is where you would have something like a software based room correction. So what makes Drax so special? Well, the ease of use is one. The software is very, very intuitive, not buggy. It's very smooth. It's very explanatory. It's very ex explanatory. Um, every step of the way it is going, you okay? You okay? And it has its hand over your shoulder. Loved that about the room correction. Also, uh, this is the only correction software that accounts for phase, speaker placement, room resonance reduction, and early reflection. So it's basically gonna take into account your entire setup and placement within the room and then correct for all of it. So at the heart of the room correction, you have to get a calibrated mic. Now, uh, Drac uh, really recommends this mini DSP UMIK1, which is what I have here today because of its ease of use, it's plug and play. There's no drivers to download or anything like that. This is also, I found this interesting, this is a USB-C microphone, meaning I'm not physically plugging this into an XLR and going through preamps and coloring the microphone input. USB, this is basically will act as an interface when you plug it into your computer and you're off to the races. So let's go ahead and talk about the actual process of starting to correct your room, where you're going to shoot your room or sweep your room or whatever you wanna call it. Basically, you're gonna put this microphone on a mic stand and you're gonna place it facing the speakers uh, where your listening position is. You want this where your head is going to be and there's going to be a bunch of different points at which the direct software tells you to move it and then you will hear a couple of frequency sweeps. Now, once you're done with the frequency sweep part, you're basically, you're done as far as analyzing your room. The software now knows where it sits and thusly it can then correct and find any trouble spots and correct for them. So once you're done measuring your room, this is where you kind of land. This is your room. Actually, in this case, this is my room. Uh, as you can tell in the low end, I have a a pretty good dip right here. And I also have a really nasty low mid hump going on. My top end and my mid range is fairly okay. Once I get to, you know, any, anywhere above 200, I'm okay. I'm not too concerned about that. And then it gets kind of wonky in here. So I can then, I can then come in here and draw my target curve. I'm gonna turn that off. So if I want to, this target curve is what after, this is post correction. So this is, this is where I can customize. I can add low end if I want. I can add a point. I can add a control point. 
I can also delete a control point. So if I wanted to delete these, I could do that. And I can basically do anything I want. And this is where I would basically draw in, um, let's see, you know, an NS10 frequency curve, you know, it's, it's something like this. You know, there's not, there's no low end on a, on a Yamaha NS10, but if I wanted to kind of simulate listening through an NS10, this is how I would do it. And then I would export this filter as, as just basically another preset like I have right here. Cause currently I only have two. I have studio neutral, which is like a dead flat. And then I have a little bit of a low end boost, which is generally what I want to run most of the time. But this way. I can intuitively kind of dial in how I want my, my playback to sound. I can customize it for me or my given situation. If I want to simulate a headphone EQ curve, I can do that. Um, this is very, very easy and intuitive to use. And I can also isolate just my left side, just my right side. Yeah. I can also take a snapshot if I want. Very cool. So I ran the correction. How did it go? Honestly, uh, I clearly have some phase issues with this room. That's not super unexpected. I knew I had some. I spent two hours listening to uh, my music collection in iTunes. I just sat and listened because it was like listening to all my favorite music over again for the first time. The width that I suddenly had and the low end spread I had was incredible. I honestly texted a couple of audio friends in disbelief. I couldn't believe how good the direct live room correction was. Honestly, this is me not speaking as YouTube guy. This is me as audio nerd fluff. Honestly, I was blown away by the results I got from the Drac live room correction. So let's wrap this up. What do I think of the Drac Live Room correction? Well, I love the fact that I can route the output. Um, since I use a Universal Audio Apollo X8 interface, I can route the audio to a virtual channel. So I have my, my DAW on a virtual channel, and then I have my system audio on another virtual channel. This just makes it easier for me to capture audio if I'm doing a something in Logic or something like that. I don't have to just go monitor left, right out. I love that part. I also love the quick change uh, menu in the plugin and the standalone version to just quickly just switch between different EQ curves if I want to. I'm gonna play with that later and maybe try to replicate some, you know, monitor EQ curves. Uh, but I really, really love those features. The latency is very low. Um, the one thing I would change with this software is on the standalone version, you can only use it in 44.1 sample rate. I would love to do it in 48K uh, sample rate because I am a video guy and in the video world, everything is 48K. So I wish I could switch it. I wish I could switch the sample rate in the global settings, but that's not a deal breaker for me. And lastly, if you want this software for the stereo version, it's gonna run you about 350 bucks after tax. Honestly, I can't even believe how good this software is. I was very, very impressed. I will link down below in the description if you would like to know more about all things Drac and room correction. And with that, you've been wonderful, I've been Fluff. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you liked the video you just watched, please consider subscribing. And if you wanna further support me and what I do, consider using some of the affiliate links down below in the description of this video. Go on over to Sweetwater, buy yourself something and help me out at the same time. It's a win-win for both of us.